Okay, so we pulled both of those out. It's it's pretty impressive how clean those are. Something tells me that this uh, this car was rebuilt. This this is probably why it was so gunked up in there and it didn't look like fuel. I think this carburetor was rebuilt and then it sat with the solvent in it. That might have been that might be solvent that we're dealing with. So uh, anyway, neither here nor there. So now uh, we pulled those out. You can throw them away. Uh, don't forget they got little gaskets on them that should come with them. Yeah, some of them, the older ones were brass and the newer ones were steel or vice versa. I can't remember now, but this may be the, uh, an older kit. So now we're just gonna reassemble those in there backwards, put both of those ports in there. We're not gonna worry about the slide plates. And um, uh, a lot of times you pull those to clean them, but those look really clean. Again, I think this thing was rebuilt before it was it was only used a couple times after being rebuilt. Well, we know we see valve here, so uh, maybe what happened is it got put on a older vehicle that sat for a while and the old fuel got in here and maybe that's what gummed it up, I don't know, and it was backfiring or whatever, but again, neither here nor there. Let's put the needle valves in and we'll start running everything backwards from there. And then uh, I'll show you again how to adjust those screws. For now, go ahead and put these two screw ports in, the air jets, and tighten them all the way down because you're not gonna turn them in so many times and that's where they set. We're gonna tighten them all the way down and then we're gonna back out and that's where they set. And I'm gonna set this one, it's a 650, so I'm gonna set these at two, and uh, which just means two full revolutions. And then uh, we'll adjust it when it's on the vehicle, that's best. Um, anything bigger than a 650, I like to adjust at uh, one and a half, one three quarter. Anything smaller than a 550, you can, you can come out a little bit further, so. This one we're going to put it to and if you're not sure then just put them all at two and then you can fine tune them while it's running while it's sitting there idling you're going to crank them one way or the other until it's spitting or not spitting it's right there in the happy medium and that's uh that's with your with your ears so all right let's go ahead and get that started okay these little screens the older ones come with a flat bottom these ones they just pinch um but see this the front side here how it's all messed up and stuff it's, it's a pain in the butt to get in there. So all you're gonna do is just hold the open side that's gonna go in and just roll it in your fingers like that. And uh, you'll, you'll roll it right down and then it'll slide right in. That's the little trick to those. So, all right, we'll get those in. Okay, just in case you're doing a 750, I told you uh, when we took this off, there, there was a screen behind it and there wasn't a screen behind it. So in your kit, that's what that screen is for. And this is a, gonna be a universal kit, so um, that's the reason we're not gonna use it. But that's where it would go, right there. So, okay, let me get that in. But before you stick it on, um, change the gasket with the new kit. Look at the washer really closely. They, it looks the same on both sides, but if you really inspect it, you'll see the Teflon coating on the one side. That Teflon's gonna go up against the carburetor, and the uh, metal side, of course, is gonna go towards the, uh, the bolt, so. All right, let me get that on. Okay, so here's the adjustment for your air mixture on both sides. So we went all the way down and it's tight. It literally stopped. And so I'm gonna back it up now. Let me see if I can do this with two hands. One hand. So I'm gonna back it up. That would be a half turn. That would be a half turn. So that's one. Come on, screwdriver. One and a half and two. Leave it set right there. The next one, half, one, half, and two. That's where you're gonna set those. As long as they're extremely clean and and uh, been put back in properly, that's your air uh, adjustment mixture. And again, that's for every single carburetor. And then we're gonna adjust it after it's on the vehicle. And I'm not gonna have a video of that, so uh, here's what I'm going to do after it gets put back on the vehicle um, if I hear it spitting it almost sounds like it's spraying like if you hear that then you're going to take uh, and turn this in a quarter turn on both screws and if you don't hear it and it's it's sucking like that then you're going to uh, back it out just a hair so it just depends on whether you're getting to, I'm sorry it's the opposite you're going to back it out if it's spraying and, and in if it's sucking so and just play with it go back and forth and you shouldn't have to adjust it more than a quarter turn either direction um so ideally anyway i've never sometimes a half a turn on the 750s because you need more air but on the 550s, 650s not more than a quarter turn so all right so we're good with there let's put the float assembly on these 
So here, what we're gonna do is drop the new needle valves. They have to they have to ride on the float right there. And um, there's no adjustment on these ones, is there? Nope. So, uh, but if you do have an adjustment, let me explain to you how to do that. Once you get your float on there, if you need to adjust it, the, the carburetor sits like this normally. You're gonna turn it upside down and look at the float. The float needs to sit completely level. If it's up, it needs adjusted. If it's down, it needs adjusted. If it's down too far, it's gonna flood out. If it's up too far, it's gonna starve. So it needs to sit perfectly level when you adjust it. These particular ones don't have adjustments. You can bend these tabs right here for the adjustments. So um, if they have been bent, if they haven't been bent, then there's no adjusting them. But uh, we'll double check them and make sure. If, if that's the case, then we'll adjust them. So, all right, so a level float when the carb is upside down is proper adjustment. So, all right, let's put those in. Okay, so you can see here, I just stuck it back in, and clearly you can tell that the front part of that float towards my thumb is up higher than the back. So I'm gonna bend that down a little bit. So that tells me that this carburetor was starving just a little bit. Not much, it would have worked, but it is starving just a little bit. So all we're gonna do is just give it a little bend, uh oh, that wasn't a little bend, that was a huge bend. So now it's flooding out. So now I'm gonna have to stick a screwdriver in here and pry it back just a hair because this tab here is where the adjustment is when you make the bend. So, uh, and good thing that it's made of brass so it doesn't break. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I have to use two hands. So I'm gonna stick a screwdriver right in there and now I'm just gonna pry back up a little bit and readjust that tab until this float is sitting level with the edge of the carb. So I know you see that rod on there, that uh, the, connect, the rod that connects to this uh, lever is in the way, but literally if you just look at it now, you can see it should be sitting right about there. So, all right, let me get that adjusted. Okay, so I got those adjusted to where they're perfectly level. So that's where they need to adjust. And then of course, when the fluid level drops down, they're gonna open up that much and really let the fuel in. So, um, oh, that tab there needs to go down just a hair more on the back side. Um, the back side here on that tab tells you how much fuel goes in the bowl. And you don't want it to open too far because it'll actually get stuck in the bowl. That one there is, that's perfect. This one here is too much. So we're gonna bend that tab back down now there too. Um, other than that, they're in perfect adjustment so we can move on to something else. Let me bend that and we'll get started. Okay, so now we're gonna stick these jets back in there. Um, now these particular jets, oh, what did I put the sleeves? Um, anyway, uh, they didn't come with new springs. Most of the time they do. Um, so these particular jets, you're gonna make sure you clean this really good right here. Uh, there will be a burr there, but it's not actually a burr, it's writing. Sometimes they do anyway. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it right there, but that's actually writing, it's a part number. That just skipped past, but everything else needs to be extremely clean. So let's get those cleaned up and we'll set them in. Okay, so we have both of those cleaned up, ready to go in. They didn't come with the spring. Um, for the accelerator pump, it did come with a new one. You know where that goes, right there in the corner. And so, um, or wait, I think I just stuck that. Yeah, that's right. So uh, here we're gonna put the new seal on, the accelerator pump. You're just gonna pull that off. It didn't come with the rod. I don't know why this one always, the kits always come with a new rod, but this one didn't have one. Or I think he might've said that they took it out for some reason. But anyway, so uh, we're just gonna replace the seal because it did have the seal. So whoever took the rod out of it didn't need the seal. So we'll put that seal on here now. Just pull it up and around over top one of those lips and stretch the new one on. Okay, I just set it down in there with the new spring. We'll let that sit for now because uh, the top cover is gonna slide right on top of that. And so now we can set both of these back in there. Those can be tightened up. And same with the outer pieces. So the first thing you wanna do is put your butterfly back in. Now, which way does this go? The weights always go, this is the front of the carburetor, that's the back. The weights always go, point towards the back. That's it. So we'll drop those in there and then we will, uh, we can put these back on. We've got our new gaskets on there. So both those can go back on there and we can tighten those up. So let me go ahead and put all those down with that, that uh, Torx. Okay, so now you got that jet cleaned there. Um, find your right gasket, which is this one. And the important part here is now the weight. The weight needs to go back down inside there. Um, the old one, it's not the old one. Yeah, there's the old one. So the new one is gonna go back down inside there before you put this back on. And there should be a spring for that. 
and I don't see one in the new kit. I think that was the old one there. So we're gonna set that inside there as well to keep that down. There's two sides to the spring. One is small and one is big. Well, I might have lied to you. They look the same. No, that one's small. So uh, the small one's gonna go down. Just like that. And then we're gonna put this on top of it and tighten it down. So let me get that on there. Okay, so now we're ready to stick the top on. All that's assembled. Um, your accelerator pump, you can just sit in there like that and then lower it all in one shot. And it should be a little bit easier to lay it in there too. Slide plates, we didn't worry about pulling them out because they were clean. So I think that we are ready to set the top on. And then there'll be seven uh, screws on top of that. And of course, our other two jets. And okay, when you set the top back down on there, don't tighten the screws down all the way. Just put a couple, one on each side, because you want to make sure that those little air jets right there and right there are seated in there the way they're supposed to be. You don't want to try to pry this on, you'll end up breaking them. And if you if you get those backwards, if that one's over here and this one's over here, that jet will be flipped around and pointed towards the back and you won't be able Okay, so I lost my battery for a minute there. So yeah, as long as those two jets are, are lined up and again, if they're flipped around, then um, it won't push down on there. So it should seat properly. And then you also want to look down inside the holes and make sure that the gasket is not shifted on you. Put the new gasket on. Oh, and make sure you put that gasket on prior to putting the float bowls on. Um, that's the only way it's going to go on. Everything else it'll fit around, but not the float bowls. So I don't think I said that. So now I'll go ahead and put the rest of those on and we'll put our linkage back on. Okay, so that's it. Everything's put back together the way it's supposed to. The linkage, it gets you a good clear picture of the linkage and how it's supposed to go. You can see right there, right there, the bottom section of it. And so hopefully you completely understand how to rebuild those. If not, leave any comments and I'll help you the best I can. If I don't know, I can find somebody that does. So um, I do appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, click on any of my other videos if you want to click on my name underneath uh, this video. And uh, please subscribe. Please leave a comment. Please let me know if there's anything else that you want uh, help with, and I'll be happy to do it. So thanks again for watching. Have a great day.